Hello, friends. My name is Kurt Kaufman, and I bring you greetings from this historic First Baptist Church of Denver. And I offer us now our call to worship and invocation. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day of new beginnings, and a beautiful one at that. Within Christian tradition, today is the second Sunday after Pentecost. Would you please pray with me? Lord, we come this day as witnesses to the beauty of creation around us, especially that beauty we see each time we look west here in Denver to see those mighty Rockies looking down on us. We have enjoyed both the bright sunshine and the recent rains. We marvel over the beauty of flowers and the complexity of your creation. Make our hearts ready to receive your word for us, that we may go forth from this place ready to joyfully serve you all of our days. Amen. Good morning, my name is Scott Pegues. Today's sacred reading is found in the Hebrew scriptures, Genesis chapter three, verses eight through 15. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves for the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself, he said. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among the animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. Good morning. I'm Nancy Darnell. I have a word for our children. So I want to tell you first a family story of mine. So the story goes like this. There were people called Huguenots, which meant they practice kind of a different religion from the other people around them. 
and they felt that nobody liked them, and so they decided to run away. Do you know where they ran away? They ran away to Georgia years and years and years ago. It was, let me see, we're in 2021. This was in 16, I think about 70. I mean, a long time ago. But do you know what they found out when they were here? They found out they could together love God and worship God and talk about God and Jesus and all the things that are right and wrong. They figured out they could do that and they felt, well, it's a big word, redeemed. They did. They felt things are good now, redeemed. Well, now, a long, 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 long time ago, there was a story that was told for generations and generations that goes something like this. There was a woman named Eve and a man named Adam. And they were in this beautiful garden, and they were supposed to do everything, everything they wanted to do, and eat everything there was to eat except for this one tree that had some fruit on it. I don't know what kind of fruit it was. Let's call it a kumquat. I hope a kumquat's a fruit. Well, anyway, one day a snake came along and said to Eve, Eve, that's the best fruit in the whole garden. I want you to go eat that. And she said, no, we're not supposed to do that. No, we've, been, we've said, no, we're, we're not supposed to. Oh, you go right ahead. Look how good it looks. And so Eve said, well, OK. Eve was tempted, yes. She was tempted to take that fruit, and she ate it, and you know what? She said, it's the best fruit I've ever had in my entire life, and she went to Adam, and, and she said, Adam, here, have a bite of this fruit. It's the best fruit I've ever eaten in my life, and Adam said, oh, okay, I will, because you said, and that's what he did, and do you know what happened then? God said, I think I didn't tell you all you could eat that fruit, but... Why'd you do that? And Eve said, well, it's that snake. That snake told me to eat it. And Adam said, oh, it's that woman. She told me to eat it. They blamed other people, didn't they, for their mistakes. Yes, they did. And God said, uh-oh. It's not good for you, Eve. It's not good for you, Adam. And it's really not good for you, Snake. But you know what? That's not the end of the story. We'll talk about the end of that story another time. This week, you think about this part of the story. And I will see you next week. And have a good week. Bye. Thank you, Nancy. I can't wait to hear the next part of that story. So we'll see. Have you ever done something you knew that you weren't supposed to do? Even as an adult, most of us know something about trying to sneak a cookie from the cookie jar, especially when we're told not to do that. I remember when I was a kid and my parents would take me to visit my uncle Bobby and my aunt Denise. My aunt and uncle had what seemed at the time like this big fish tank in their living room. And Aunt Denise's dad would sometimes be around. And for me, as a small kid at that point in time, he seemed tall and stern and often mean. He really wasn't, but that's how it felt as a small kid. And he didn't like us touching the fish tank and leaving our fingerprints on it. I'd stand in the living room staring at my Aunt Denise's dad and to see if he was looking. And then I would look at the fish tank and I'd watch the fish swimming around. And if her dad wasn't looking, or at least I would think that he wasn't looking, I would go and I'd touch the fish tank. I couldn't help it. And before you knew it, we had fingerprints all over and we'd all get in trouble. Well, a couple of years ago, I was 
about to start a meeting, and while I was waiting for some folk to arrive, I smelled something really, really good. I looked across the hall from where I sat, and lo and behold, in the room opposite me, there was a plate with freshly baked chocolate chip cookies. It was the middle of the afternoon, and I was hungry. I thought, surely, no one is going to miss just one cookie. As the cookies were still warm, the cookie that I snuck from the plate left a trail of melted chocolate smeared on the plate as I quickly moved that cookie to my mouth. I tried to touch it up a little bit and I moved the cookies around and then quickly returned to my meeting room where I sat and waited for folk to arrive. Well, as fate would have it, the person who had minutes earlier placed that plate of cookies on the table for some reason came by to check on them and yet she noticed that one was missing. Brian, did you see someone come by here? I just brought that plate of cookies in and someone took one. I'm just frustrated. I can't believe it that someone would do that. I said, no, I didn't see anyone come by. And that was the truth. But then I probably didn't help myself because next I really did fib even more, to be honest. I continued, and I'm sure glad that I'm not hungry this afternoon. Otherwise, I might have been tempted to take one of those cookies too. She threw her hands up in the air, and she walked off. Now, have you ever done something you knew you weren't supposed to do, even as an adult? I hope I'm not alone. The story of Adam and Eve in the garden, as Scott read for us and as Nancy just shared with our children about it, is a story to remind us of our humanity. It's a narrative that is told with some ancient humor. It tells us that we are going to touch fish tanks and sneak cookies, maybe even as adults. Can you imagine? As Scott read, they heard, they, man and woman, Adam and Eve, they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. Honestly, I really don't know what that means, literally. But I wonder if it's something like that feeling we learn early on, that feeling that tells us that we've probably done something we shouldn't have and we might just get in trouble. My mom used to say, just wait until your father gets home. You see, the story in Genesis 3 is not a story that's intended to explain a curse that has been placed on women and men for all of eternity, nor on snakes for that matter, but it's a story to remind us each that we are each human. And to be human means that we will not always get things right. And since we will not get things right, it's helpful for us to extend grace to others around us, especially if we want others to extend grace to us. As we reflected together Thursday evening this past week during our weekly FBCD Lectio Divina Zoom group, our weekly scripture study group, I was struck by the conclusion of our text, which is our text today. These words that seem to condemn the serpent. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. It seems to me that this suggests that the serpent is relegated to being the lowest of the low. You can't get much lower when you must slither away on your belly, right? Well, later in the Torah, in the Pentateuch, in the first five books of the Hebrew Scriptures, we read in Numbers chapter 21 that the serpent is used there to bring healing and hope to the ancient Israelites. When Moses lifted up the serpent on a rod and the people looked to it, the story tells us that lives were saved. This reminds me that the God we serve is a God who is in the business of redeeming creatures, of redeeming serpents, of redeeming even human creatures like you and me. It's easy to live with more guilt than we should. The God in whom I place my faith is not a God that is out to punish me or to punish us, but rather is a God that seeks to lift us up, giving us hope, offering us a fresh start, and one too who is in the business of helping us live 
into the fullness of our humanity, even that humanity that may not always reflect the best of our better angels. It's easy to live with more guilt than we should. Will you today give yourself permission to believe that you are a good person, even with the humanity that makes you who you are? Perhaps we might each be wise to see ourselves in a more positive light. Will you? You might even find yourself living with greater energy and hope. Amen. Beautiful. 
Um, well, my name is still Kurt Kaufman. Please know that your gifts and pledges support First Baptist Church of Denver and our ministry in necessary and meaningful ways. Our church community is truly blessed by your support. And as we head into the summer months, your support becomes even more crucial and significant. So thank you in advance for your generosity. During the month of June, we will receive the second of four special denominational offerings, the One Great Hour of Sharing offering. Uh, this offering supports disaster and relief work throughout the United States, Puerto Rico, and places around the world. And as a member of the Board of General Ministries, I can personally attest to the impact that this particular offering has. So thank you in advance for your support. You can continue to offer your gifts by mailing them to the church office or by giving online through the donate feature on the church website. Know that every gift that you offer supports all of the ministry that happens through 1373 Grant Street. For now, I offer us this blessing, which is actually subscribed on a plaque in my hometown of Green Lake, Wisconsin. May the courage of the early morning's dawning, the strength of the eternal hills, the peace of the evening's ending, and the companionship of the living Christ be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>